show you how I do the masking, which is not super difficult. I do uh, a couple of, I usually only do like one little quick drop here. There's a fly in here that I swear to God, me and Matt have been trying to kill it for like two days now. <laughs> His don't, name is Bill. <laughs> don't at me, PETA. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I pop that on there. You'll notice that I, I've, I've kind of evolved on this technique. I, I used to um, mask off the whole area. And now what I do is I put that in there so that it actually, it doesn't actually go all the way to the edge. So when this is, when I spray the whole guitar and I'm getting ready to pull that masking tape off, I can pull it off. And this part is bare wood, but there's actually good lacquer that's tucked up underneath the fingerboard extension. So that's how I do that. I'm gonna take my neck, I'm gonna bolt it on. Not, I'm not gonna crank it down super, super hard, but I wanna make sure that it's in its home place. Um, I have an acrylic template that I use um, to mark where the, so that I can mark off where the bridge is gonna go. I'm gonna put this right here. This is just the old 3M painter's tape. It works really, really good for this. Uh, when you do these, I'm butting them next to one another. I am not overlapping them. I don't want to have the tape sitting on top of each other because it's going to create a ridge in the in the paint or in the in the lacquer. So that, there we go. There's that. Now what I'm going to do is, on this piece of acrylic, I have a mark where the actual saddle is going to go. I'm going to get it in the rough area. That got that set my distance this way. And then I'm going to set this on here, which this is a neck alignment jig, which buy one of these. <laughs> and then I'm going to move it left to right to get it to where I want it to go. Once again, I am not taking my time and getting this dead ass perfect. I'm just getting it close. Now, Matt's got all the good pencils. <laughs> <laughs> or you know there's that one right there that I know but it's too it's got too much of a dull tip on it <laughs> so I uh, do not apply a lot of pressure with your pencil here um, you don't want to put the dent in the spruce especially if you're using the cedar top instrument I'm just trying to create a can you see on there what we've done look what you've done <laughs> so that gives you an idea can you see yeah there you go so now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut this back but I'm I'm not gonna cut to the line I'm gonna cut back about I don't know almost a quarter an inch we'll have Matt bring it in closer once I go to peel it off um, can you see where I'm razor blading in in relation to the actual pen line you know I'm not touching it for two reasons a um, I don't want to create a ridge this off now. Yep. There. That's that's where we want it. So the reason why I don't bring that that all the way to the um, to the outer edge of where the um, the actual bridge is going to go, two reasons is because I didn't take my time and get it dead ass perfect. So I might the the bridge may be one way a quarter of a millimeter up down you know anyway uh, the other part is that you don't want to if you have like your your paint your tape uh, when you spray the lacquer it's going to create a ledge right there that you're going to see so I actually want this t the masking tape to be in from where it's actually going to end up being I know that's a little bit I don't know a better way to describe that um, so that you don't have a little ledge inside the lacquer um, so that's there that's home um, and so when I'm done painting I'm actually just going to pull that off um, and then that gives me some bare wood so that I can get in there with a chisel and actually take that bare spot to the actual size of where the bridge is going to go. Um, I consider that basically that is prepped. Um, the only thing else that I have left to do is to mask off the fretboard. There's schools of thought on fretting. I encourage you to figure out what system works for you. I fret my guitars now. I fret it before I do the guitar. A lot of people will do the frets after you apply the finish. Um, there's a reason I do it. I um, I think that it, I always do bound fret boards. So you end up with your finger or your fret tangs um, 
they're super glued down on the very edges here to keep them sealed. But because I do my frets before I apply my lacquer, when I mask this off, I leave the tips of these frets exposed so that the lacquer will actually seal the ends of all that and create a really nice seal so that your fingers don't get caught on the frets. Hmm. That's the way I do it. Um, other people do, I find that I think that more people actually fret after they apply the lacquer. Um, I'm sure they have their reasons, <laughs> but that's just kind of how I go about doing it. Um, so I'll mask this off real quick. Not a whole lot to it. I, here's the thing that bothers me is I see a lot of people do this and I don't understand it. They literally will go like that and call that mask. And that's, that bothers the hell out of me. <laughs> um, you actually want to take your, um, take your time with this and do it right just like everything else so I take it and I start here and I actually make it so that it actually hangs off a little bit um, I find something that's got a nice square end on it and I and I create a seal around my frets is that just ensuring that you don't have any issues with uh, lacquer getting up underneath the tape exactly um, it creates a really good seal yeah and I don't have any issues but the other part is like Thinking about the full process, um, once this lacquer is dried for a couple of weeks, and I go to buff it out, is I'm going to use I'm going to be spraying it with water and wet sanding. So I don't want to get a bunch of water on the bare fretboard. So this seals that all off. I don't take this tape off until after I've buffed the instrument. So that's that to me is the main reason is it, it seals that off really well. Because I have sprayed instruments for other people before who did all the masking work. And they did the whole lay the tape just on top of the frets. And I didn't have any issues with overspray getting underneath it. But I did have issues with water getting up underneath it once I was buffing the instrument. So I'll show you how I go about doing this. Um, I got a couple of little tricks that I do. I'm trying to go quick for everybody. This is not, I mean, you're watching this in real time. This is not taking long at all. But so many people cut corners here, and I don't know. It makes a difference, in my opinion. It is like the weirdest thing. Like, Matt and I are working on that electric line, right? And like, we can build the guitars really quick, but there's no way around a quality lacquer job just takes time. So that's kind of going to be our bottleneck. Um, and it's funny, I'm, I'm showing you guys in this video, but literally this is the first time Matt has heard me give this spiel too. So Matt, Matt's uh, learning as we as you guys go too. So, <laughs> so now what I'm going to do is get this down inside the nut slot. Press that down in there. Press that down in there. And I'm going to take my razor blade and trim it. With the dullest razor blade I own. <laughs> Let me get a new razor blade. <laughs> there we go. All right, so now I'm going to take my, my sharp razor blade and just roughly get this to where I want it. Let it ride, ride the edge. Same thing over here. down here but the real trick is in you take a piece of wood and you get like a 320 grit I don't know this will work right just uh, just grabbing a random piece of wood uh, or a 400 grit or whatever you want and then you're just gonna take it and go like this kind of going at the same angle that my fret bevel is. But you can see what it's done is giving me, it's shaved off like that, look at that piece right there. Watch when I take the sandpaper to it. Boom. Oh, cool. And so what you're left with is a perfect seal. Um, you can see the fret ends are just exposed. Everything else is totally sealed off. So now I'm gonna get a really good seal on there with my lacquer as well. So that to me, the sandpaper technique is, is very useful. 
Uh, I need to do it down here, and then do it along the other end. I use this technique on any masking job that I'm doing for the most part because it is just a really good way to get a perfect clean edge. Um, you can use this technique with tape for all kinds of different processes. But I have a little little baby files here. I'm just going to do the same thing, knock off the masking tape, overhang off of the nut area. How many people think this is complete overkill? But when I'm done, man, this stuff comes off and I'm off to the races. It's perfect. Like I said, you either do the time now or you do it later. So I prefer to do it now. Um, so that's good to go, totally sealed. I'm just gonna do a quick little same thing on the back side of this fingerboard. Takes just a second. So that's good. I will probably do a little bit here. Um, we're not getting ready to go in the paint booth just yet, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, one thing I've noticed is that I don't actually worry about masking this off the underside of my neck heel. Um, just the nature of how it hangs while I'm spraying. I don't actually get any paint on there. Um, so I consider that prepped. So now we can do the pour fill. You can see why like, I've taken the time to do all this now because if I, if I am doing my pour fill on this, I got like epoxy on my fingers. I don't accidentally grab the fingerboard and put a giant thumbprint on my inlays and stuff. Um, yep, so I'm gonna get this stuff cleaned up a little bit and then we'll do the pour fill. Uh, no. We're going to actually go into the paint booth and do the lacquer seal on the guitar. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do. I got to I got to clean the paint booth for a second and then we'll do that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I've got some naphtha. I'm going to wipe it down and see I've got a little dark spot there that I need to sand out. And the fly is back in here. <laughs> the fly is just totally messing with us. Um, just because I'm doing a wash cup. What is, what is... <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I just got some giant thumbprint on there, so I gotta get that cleaned off real quick. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the heck. Might have to get the old little sander out. Let's see. I'm using like 400 grit here just so I'm not putting a low spot in it. Which is another reason it's funny that happened, but there's a reason why I use naphtha to wipe it down is because the naphtha is gonna show any spots uh, where there's some discolorations and stuff like that. So, still a little spot. Now, party balloon time. <laughs> uh, I used to pack my guitars like chuck full of uh, like, uh, um, like paper towels and um, like shopping bags. But then I saw somebody use a balloon, which obviously is pretty smart. <laughs> and then there you go. Bada bang. You are fully plugged. So and that feels good, looks good. Um, I have done, uh, I've mixed up a 50 50 cut of the Cardinal Ice Cardinal Nitrocellulose Lacquer. Um, I used to use the McFadden's, but they don't make it anymore. Cardinal stuff has been awesome, and then I uh, cut it in half with lacquer. So I'm gonna grab my respirator real quick, and we'll spray just a quick seal coat on there. <laughs> uh, I do a quick little uh, wipe down with a uh, tack cloth just to make sure we got you no know, not as much dust on it. Now I'm not treating this as if I'm starting the finish work quite yet. I'm just gonna do like a seal coat. This whole seal coat is just. Like I said, to prevent this coca bolo from bleeding out all over the maple. Feels good. Looks good. Um, I've got this super awesome 3M forced air respirator. Uh, I use this Fuji. This is their five stage um, turbine HVLP system, which the, the actual, I'll go out here and show you. I've got, what is this, the Platinum Q5 uh, for spraying. And then I've got a nice exhaust, uh, explosion proof exhaust fan and lighting and stuff out there, which is cool. But for my, I call this a wash coat uh, when I cut it 50-50 like this, because I want that lacquer to soak deep into the wood um, and flash off really quickly. Uh, for when I do that, I actually have this cranked up as high as it'll go just to get atomization as good as possible. But it's just gonna be a quick sling, so we'll do that real quick.
that looks nice. <laughs>